Americans across the nation are losing access to their cash, and it's all because of a bank that has now blocked customers from taking out their money. That doesn't sound too good, does it? The problem is that this isn't even the first time that it's happened with them. Many shoppers here at the Fort Wright Walmart heard about or knew someone having problems this week with their Walmart debit card. Did you hear, ma'am, that they had a problem with the cards? Yes, I did, on the news. Green Dot, the company behind the Walmart prepaid card, said a technical glitch prevented customers from checking their balances, so it looked like you have no money. On my John Mattery's Facebook page, Jody Sherrill said, my husband's having issues with his Walmart debit card. We've used the money card for years and can't check the balance. Alex Tarbox messaged me, I've had issues checking my account or getting an accurate balance for nearly a week now. This isn't the first time people with a popular prepaid debit card have run into troubles. Last summer, thousands of people who had the Rush card couldn't use their debit cards for more than a week. But my card was not working. Uh, at a store or the ATM. This time at least, Green Dot says the cards are working. The glitch only impacts your ability to see your balance. Still, some Walmart shoppers say they don't like the idea of a prepaid card for this reason. I mean, for some people, I guess they work. Uh, I personally don't. Um, I mean, if I'm going to do that, I might as well just pay with cash. And that's why having cash or a second debit card. If it's Hillshire Farm. Oh, hell yeah. like that is a good idea. Now I've been telling you guys about cash reserves that need to be kept at home and the importance of having more than one bank account because, well, the report speaks for itself, right? And when I say having more than one bank account, I mean having more than one bank account at different banks. And this happened years ago. What's happening now is even worse, just like I said at the beginning. People are losing access to their accounts, so they literally can't use their own money. Green Dot also operates under the name GoToBank, but some people are disappointed because they've gone through not just days but weeks of waiting for their accounts to be restored now just think about that situation for a second right how many weeks will you last without access to your own money now there's actually somebody from florida who has around seven thousand dollars in her bank account and she was tagged with a suspicious activity hold granted though we don't know the history of her account but still but it shouldn't take days for a bank to confirm if your money is legit or not let alone weeks you know how will you buy food water i mean basic necessities right gas for your car how do you think you'll be able to afford that without money or access to your own money. Some of these folks had to pay their bills with credit cards, and that just goes to show that a lot of Americans are just so unbelievably unprepared for the things that they don't expect to happen. Now, before I move on from this topic, this just came to mind. So imagine a world where everyone has to be connected to the internet just for a purchase to go through, right? <coughs> <coughs> CBDC. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I just had to clear my throat there. I mean, what kind of nightmare is waiting for us with that one, right? Because I checked the comments on Green Dot's server issues, and well, they're pretty much filled with F bombs. Kind of like what many of us are actually saying whenever we buy groceries, huh? I'm just kidding, but I mean, I, nah, I, I'm, I'm not really kidding, and I'm not sorry. I know for a fact that some people are sick and tired of how high expenses have become because I see your comments. I don't get to respond to every single one of them, but whenever I have time, I try to get to a couple of y'all. Tell you what, if you're one of the people in this community that's also sick and tired of hearing the narrative of a strong economy, despite, you know, spending almost double on your food compared to just a couple years ago, make sure you smash the like button for the video. And if you're new here, also consider subscribing to the channel for the most important updates that you're not going to get anywhere else. All right. I really appreciate your support. But yeah, going back to the state of our lives right now, one expert is actually calling out the Fed for completely missing their target on this entire recession problem that we seem to be barreling towards. The deflationary forces from the tech stocks breaking in 2021, probably too, too big. The, the power of interest rates rising and depressing the real estate market, very negative, slow moving influence. I, I suspect that they will once again dominate and we will have a recession running perhaps deep into next year and, and an accompanying decline in stock prices. So the recession that you're predicting is probably not going to happen in 2023, but it may start in 2023. Uh, the Federal Reserve recently said that they think we've uh, kind of uh, cleared the recession uh, hurdle and they don't really project a recession any longer. Right. You disagree with the Fed on that? Yeah, I think the Fed's record on these things is, is wonderful. It's uh, almost guaranteed to be wrong. They uh, have never called a, a recession and particularly not the ones following the great bubbles. They prided themselves in, in stimulating the bubbles, 
they took credit for the beneficial effect of, of higher asset prices on the economy. They have never claimed credit for the deflationary effect of asset prices breaking, and they always do. Oh, that's a burn. Powell's gonna need to put some ice on that one. So that was Jeremy Grantham, and he's obviously not a big fan of the Federal Reserve or Jerome Powell for that matter. So I guess this should be a warning sign for investors. I mean, it would be pretty bad if we saw the stock market crash anytime within this year. And just like a rabbit hole, we found another path here because markets here in our country are becoming really concerned about a recession since Warren Buffett, the Warren Buffett, all right? So he and his firm, Berkshire Hathaway just dumped stocks worth $8 billion. Filing from Berkshire Hathaway saying they've uh, uh, sold a significant part of their stake in Activision going from a 6.7% stake in the company to 1.9%. Now it's this filing, uh, the 6.7% we knew as of the end of last year. So sometime in the last six or seven months, they made the sale. It's a little confusing here because as we know, Activision is right on the cusp of being sold for 95 bucks a share to Microsoft. So, and we also know Berkshire got into Activision before Microsoft even announced they were going to buy the company about 18 months ago. So just for perspective, it was always uh, no more than like a seven or eight billion dollar position. <clears throat> shalom, shalom. All praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakadash. Shalom, Lubakarium, Shah Yasharala. Double honors to my head, apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who were well. Shalom to the old for elect and to the elect lady. And, um, hey man, as you can see, man, you know. As we've been saying, and um, <clears throat> every single day this place is crumbling. You know, we are we are in a recession. People don't even know it. We are inflation. People don't even know it. There's prices rising. You know, food prices, um, products, things are very expensive. Um, gas. You know, this place is crumbling. You know, the Lord is slowly, um, you know, breaking down Babylon the Great from the inside out. And ultimately, the Heavenly Father is, is just going to decapitate this place, you know, when Yahusha returns. But this place is on its way down, man. And um, you see these people earlier, you know, they were having trouble getting their money from the banks. You know, you know, people was talking about glitches and all that. But you gotta understand this man controls the banks, he controls everything. And what Esau Edom is gonna do, he's going to create chaos financially, and he's going to create a problem for the majority of the masses, and they're gonna have to choose to take that karagma because that's what's coming. Everything you see with the banks being bankrupt, closing, you know, people having trouble with their debit cards and, you know, their income, you know, that is all just uh, 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 the tip of the iceberg, man. You know, this is we, we're going we're we're heading towards a cashless society. And as you heard this man, he said the Federal Reserve is 100 percent wrong. But see, the government. You know, Esau has to lie to the people. They have to give them that ease of everything's secure. You know, everything's going to be okay. But that's part of the deception of this beast, man. This dragon, man. But this place is out of out of here, man. <clears throat> this place is out of here. Isaiah 24 and um, <clears throat> uh, 7, the new wine morneth, the, wine, the vine languisheth. All the merry hearted do sigh. The mirth of tabards seizes. The noise of them that rejoice endeth. The joy of the harp seizeth. See? And that's what the Heavenly Father ultimately is going to do, man. All the partying, all the celebrating, you know? All of that, that's that mirth, that spirit of mirth, the Heavenly Father is going to take away from Babylon the Great, man. And those that want to participate, you know, in continuing with some type of comfort in your lives and and be able to eat and survive. Well, you're going to have to take that Karaks because all of that, that's what's coming. You know, 
They should not drink wine with a song. Strong drink should be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down, which is America. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. There is a crime for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. See, the mirth of the land is gone. The Lord taking it away. Isaiah 32, I'm going to start at 9. You know, rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. You know, today at camp, earlier we had a, a pack of hyena eaves, man. Just out of order. You know, what the Lord said, many days and years shall you be troubled, ye careless women. For the vengeance shall fail, the gathering shall not come. And ultimately, this is just going to come to everyone in Babylon the Great. But see, the Heavenly Father say he's going to visit the house of Israel first. Tremble, ye women that are at ease. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. They shall lamb it for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and brides. Yeah, upon all the houses of joy. In the joyous city, because the palaces shall be forsaken, the multitude of the city shall be left, the forts and towers shall be for dens forever, a joy of wild asses, a pastor of flocks. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, you know, that's going into the elect and the kingdom coming. But the overtone uh, our message or this prophecy is that the Lord is going to take away the mirth, our people are going to suffer. And you already see this place going down, you know. Uh, Isaiah 32 in the uh, NLT. Let me read this verse 13. For your land will be overgrown with thorns and briars. Your joyful homes and happy towns will be gone. See that? The palace and the city will be deserted. And busy towns will be empty. You know, busy towns. And that's what's coming. People ain't going to be able to come out. You know, it's going to be martial law, um, military. Only those that have the uh, the karagma are going to be able to enjoy themselves. They're not even going to enjoy the sucker. You're still going to be a prisoner in your own home, and you're going to be under martial law. You're going to be under fascism, totalitarianism, man, being controlled. But Yah Bashim Yah is going to take care of the elect wherever we at, our family, our home. The Lord is going to make sure the angels protect us. See, we're coming into that time. See, we're coming to the end of this devil's kingdom, man. So you see it when this is happening. This place is, is, is just done. Look at the past state drops from 6.7% to 1.9%. You know? Yeah, Wall Street going to crash real heavy. This place is on its way down. Let's listen to a little bit more. For Berkshire, uh, market cap of Berkshire is $750 billion right now. Oh, yeah. Now pick your jaws up off the floor, folks, but yeah. What is this guy preparing for? Like, what does Warren Buffett know that we don't know? Because that's not chump change, you know? And keeping to our topic of money for today. And you got Warren Buffett, which is a billionaire. He's he's He knows what's going on because he's one of those puppets that work for the elites. They know what's going to know. They know that this place is going to go down. They know this place is going to crash. They know there's going to be sedition among men. There's going to be a chaos. There's going to be an economic crisis. There's going to be a, 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 a violence, food shortages. There's going to be a lot of killing, a lot of violence. They know this. This is why they're preparing themselves. Look at this. U.S. banks suffer 18 million or is that million or billion? 18 billion 900 million in losses as JP Morgan Chase and Capital One take big hits from bad loans man this place is on through man hey the Lord is doing something and may the most have mercy on us man this place is going down we got JP Morgan Chase and Capital One 
taking massive losses after they just let us know that they're in the hole for $18.9 billion due to bad loans. Now going by just the numbers here, their losses for the start of this year that are designated as unrecoverable loans are at 17%. So these are loans that they basically have to just kind of give up on because there's no way they're going to get paid back at this point. Now what's also a huge factor for these bad loans, as we're going to call them, is that people are living through credit cards. What we see though, especially among more established adults, is necessities really fueling credit card debt. So number one would be an emergency expense, some kind of unexpected expected medical bill, home repair, car repair. That's the primary cause of credit card debt. And then a close second is day-to-day -day expenses. And I think that's really taken center stage over this past year with inflation being so high. It's a tough circumstance when you're putting groceries and gas and other essentials on a credit card and financing it over time. You know, it's one thing if you're paying in full and getting rewards and all these benefits, but for those who are financing this, that's where we need to come up with these payoff strategies like a 0% balance transfer or maybe a low rate personal loan or nonprofit credit counseling. Those are some things that you could try. Like we hit a record high on credit card debt. I mean, that should pretty much tell you almost everything that you need to know about what the heck is going on around us. And you got to realize these folks, they can have an emergency just like that with a snap of a finger. You know what I mean? And then they're forced to reallocate their paychecks. And then, well, you know the rest of that story. But hey, what are you guys' thoughts on today's? Well... That's it for it. Through the spare of y'all about shimmy out shot. This place is going down, brothers. It's going down.